what is a mop brush and what sort of painting effects can you achieve with a mop brush? How would you use a mop brush? What are the sort of particular qualities it's got that other watercolour brushes don't have? Hello, my name is Tim Wilmot, watercolour painter, producing watercolour tutorials like this up on my YouTube platform. Thanks for watching this video where I cover this Mexican scene. This is Taxco in Me Mexico. And a photograph kindly uh, sent to me and shared with me by one of my patrons on my Patreon site. Uh, thank you very much, Shadell. Uh, if you want to take a look at um, some of the projects we've got on the go, go to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. We've also got a, an image sharing service up there. So if you want any inspirations of uh, scenes for landscapes or street scenes, we've got loads of stuff, loads of photographs there from all over the world. Um, for us all to to paint but this one is Taxco and my challenge with this painting is to do the whole thing with one brush so I've got another um, watercolor brush from Lebenson this is going to be I'm going to be using a uh, a goat a goat synthetic blend um, quite a different brush you might have seen one of the other paintings I did recently of a um, a Spanish scene Ronda with one brush, uh, another sort of similar mop brush. Well, th this is a bit like the sister of that one, um, the, a, a one brush, a mop brush that's got a very good point to it and a very good uh, edge to it and water retaining capabilities as well. But more on that later on, some of the benefits of using a mop brush. But you could you could attempt this with, um, you know, with a few different brushes, certainly a large mop brush, which I'm going to be um, talking about quite a lot during during this little tutorial. So Taxco, Me Mexico, but it could be any street scene, but a lovely scene here. What what attracted me to this were these lovely um, decorations. I'm not sure what they are. I'm going to call them Sputniks. They look like um, kind of old fashioned satellites or uh, spaceships or something like that, that um, are decorations across the street, but a nice sunny scene. Uh, lots of different variations in tonal values as well. So, for example, look how bright that wall is there. The sun's coming from over our right shoulder, coming down into the street. We've got lots of dark down here, dark in the recess of the um, the street, uh, the base of the buildings in the street, um, quite dark up in the underneath the eaves of the roof as well. We've got some figures. Now with figures, with some of the street scenes, I don't, I don't always copy the photograph exactly, but with a bit of practice, you can make up your own figures and very often they will, if you paint in a loose style, if you draw in a loose style, they can be a little bit more, um, more lively, have a little, little bit more movement about them. I often find that when I copy figures from a photograph, they just look a little bit sort of static and, um, the danger is you're just, it's, it's not as much fun as when you actually sort of make up your own figures. So we're going to certainly have a lot of figures in here, which will give some some degree, some element of scale to the picture as well. So we've got some figures in the background there. We can see sort of much, very much the size of it. Something else I like are these angular shadows. Um, there's an angular shadow there, angular shadows here, um, 45 degrees in the in the background uh, another little challenge the decoration on this street level how how are we going to do that we've almost got a number of different values on this street so we've got the lighter pebbles here that are forming these lines going up the street then next layer of darkness we've got the um most of the the street is this sort of grayish brown um, mix but then third value we've got these shadows going across the street as well so that would that would be three stages in this watercolor tutorial so there we are that's my source photo taxco mexico and a one brush painting how can we use that mop brush to to uh, attempt to paint the whole painting in one go. 
uh, with all the various different types of brush marks and watercolour techniques that we, we want to use. Let's see how we get on. Paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford. This is cold press. Uh, the weight is 300 grams or 140 pounds and the dimensions are 15 inches across and then down is 11 inches. Sorry for the uh, imperial measurements there. Our first step, do the outline drawing, which I use a soft pencil for. I know some people just may go straight into painting, but I prefer to do a little outline sketch, getting in the main objects. So starting with, with on the left-hand side, um, the ridge of the left-hand roof going across the middle, and then these buildings on the right-hand side, trying to get the angles of the roof right, the jagged edge of that roof, and then the eaves of the roof, the wall, try and get that as vertical as I can. Now, perspective here, there's a little bit of a a balcony or a couple of balconies coming out from the first floor. Um, that's those there, and then connecting connect them to the wall, of course, so they don't fall down. Um, continue on down to street level, back to the building behind. Just get that one in first. Connect that building to the right-hand one. Then the buildings on the left-hand side of the street, doorway, edge of a shadow. With, with um, shadows, I don't often draw the edges of shadows, the shadow shapes. I, I might just sort of go in freehand with, uh, with my paint and um, do, the, do the shadows sort of freehand, not following any lines as such, but um, major, sh well, major shadow shapes like this, the ones going across the street. I'm just giving an indication there of those. And the right-hand side of the street, base, bottom of the buildings. Steps leading up to the left-hand building. A little window at the top. And these funny shapes in the sky, these little like Sputnik spaceships. Don't know what they are, but they look like little tiny satellites or something like that in the uh, above the street. Okay, a couple of figures. Bit of cross hatching to indicate the face. Now these would be these would be a little bit more challenging to do because the sun is over my right shoulder. So the shadows are behind the figures, which I I think is quite a tricky thing to pull off in watercolour to try and get that to get the shadows so they're not sort of all mixed up with the legs, if you see what I mean. It's a lot, a lot easier with shadows when they're to one side or they're in the front of the figure. But um, these are just sort of, the shadows for these will go sort of off at an angle behind them at a sort of 45 degree angle. Two more figures, one distant, one on the right hand side in the shade of the building. Really, I'm having to concentrate on mainly the with the figures, getting the proportions right and the the top part of the figure. Certainly, when they're in the shadows, I don't think you need to 
be bothered too much about the legs. They're going, they're going to be almost blending into the shadows. It's that square rectangular thing as that um, bush on top of the building. Not sure if it's a bush or a, a clipped tree, but uh, I think it needed something in there. And that sort of could could connect the one of the Sputniks to uh, the buildings. So that was the outline drawing done. And next step is doing some painting. And I start with an initial wash over most of the painting. Apart from those areas I want to keep light or white, or I want to handle in a, in a particular way. And I'm gonna do this, as I said, I'm gonna do this whole painting with one brush, with one large mop brush. So this large goat, uh, it's sort of half goat, half synthetic blend brush, got a very good point to it. But I'm having to think about the stages. And so the first step is to just get in some initial coloring in the bottom of the street. The, uh, there's some white lines going up the street and I don't want them to be too white. So I'm just dulling down the paper a bit with this mop brush, just picking up anything in my, in my palette and laying that down on the ground. And my take on, sh on, on, sh <laughs> my take on doing clouds, um, just lay in some water, first of all, in the sky in an almost random way. I'm preserving the lights around those Sputniks in the sky. And just a little bit of water where the clouds will be, some soft clouds. So when I go in now with the darker blue color, I'm going to get some interesting edges. And I want to try and leave a few little specks of white or clouds in there just to just so it's not too flat so this mop brush one of the benefits of a mop brush is that it holds a lot of water so i can cover a large area without having to go back into the palette it, it sort of keeps up the momentum of doing a painting so you don't have to keep stopping and mixing more color and, and maybe the, then the color is slightly different from the first color. You're, you're keeping the flow going. I'm going in with quite a nice, rich, intensive blue here. Uh, my palette on the right on the right hand side, neutral tint at the top, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, Viridian green, cobalt green, and the blues I'm using here are cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and then I've got an alizarin crimson, a Windsor red, that's four up from the bottom, and then I've got a light red, then cadmium orange, and right down the bottom is a lemon yellow. So this sky, I'm going a little bit softer towards the horizon, just mixing a little bit of water with my uh, with my mop brush. And if you've got a mop brush with a good point like this one or a good edge, you, you, you can actually be quite careful and intricate around uh, the shapes. So I've got three or four of these Sputnik things I've painted around. That's the sky pretty much done. You can see there where I'd pre-wetted the paper. 
we're getting some soft shadows appearing. Now, as I did with the road, I'm just dirting up the left-hand building so it's not too white. Just pick up a little bit of yellow Just to, uh, as I say, just to, so it's not too plain and, and white. Uh, similarly, do this building here in the middle, um, the side of the wall that's facing us. Get that uh, just covered up, cover up that white. There we go. I'm just teasing out a little bit of the sky there just to mix it a little bit more where I noticed around that cloud just make it a bit softer there on the right hand side. I need to let things dry a good bit now before I go in with the roofs and the background. So I'm speeding up the process with my hair dryer just to get, well, just to speed up the process and uh, get that dry edge. Not too worried about the how wet the uh, top of the sky is, but I just need these edges to be quite dry before I go in with the rooftops to get, as I say, to get that hard edge. I don't want the, with a mop brush, because it holds a lot of paint, uh, you've got to be careful that um, if it's too watery, the mix, you could get some blooms appearing. So you've got to be, just needs a bit of practice. Um, and, Getting to, getting to know your brush and when you look at it you can sort of sense how much how much water it will it will hold now I'm putting in the road here so I did that initial wash of the underlying color of that what these white lines these white sort of cobbles going up the street this is the the rest of the road and I just want to leave a, just a few little bits of the road surface unpainted which could be just some odd um, cobbles and things just shining against the light It's a classic mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna that I'm using here. Think about perspective. I need to make sure the lines are a little bit narrower as I go into the distance. So wider towards us, a little bit, a little bit narrower and almost joining uh, at the top of the street. Don't need to be too precise with the... The edges of those lines because it's sort of rough the the road's got a rough surface to it so I don't need to be too too straight with those edges I'm starting just to over, over the on the masking tape so I, I'm actually when I peel off the masking tape I get a nice crisp edge to the painting and a, and a white border around it which I think looks quite nice. Now just going up to the edge of the buildings on the right that will all be covered with some shadows later on
So the sky is now dried. With the hairdryer, just put in these terracotta tiles of the roof. You can also achieve with a, a brush like this, that's a mop brush that's got a good edge and a good pointer, quite a few different brush marks, different brush shapes, which depending on the angle, so you can see it on just twisting the brush just to get the edge right for whatever object I'm, I'm painting. So this, this is the lean to terracotta roof that's just facing us. Um, and I'm following the lines of the tiles a little bit. Not too concerned with covering up all of the um, all the paper. You know, I can leave a few little bits unpainted. This is that squarish sort of sort of shrub or tree, clipped tree that's above that terracotta root. So I just mixed up a little bit of that yellow, bit of blue, almost a 50-50 mix. And there'll be a dark shadow underneath that that I'll paint in later. If you want to paint along with me on projects like this and get a critique, then please take a look at my Patreon site. Those people watching this, if you're watching this, you're not a, a Patreon member, then uh, up on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, and you'll see all the details up there. Think of it like a club. A, a club for like-minded watercolour enthusiasts where we have a lot of interaction going on, including monthly projects like this where we all get involved and participate, depending on what level you're on. There's different levels of membership. And you have a go at painting this and uh, submit the painting to me for a video or text critique, depending on your preference. Um, and it's a good way of participating and painting different topics and subjects and just getting a bit of uh, a few little extra hints and tips and, and my opinion of your of your work so uh, take a look at that patreon.com slash tim wilmot so these this is the very background here um, there's a building right at the end of the street that's got um, another terracotta, another terracotta roof. And the background is actually quite complex. So I've got to simplify it a little bit with these brush marks. Again, that's going back to what I said earlier about the, the benefit of a, a mop brush, giving you the, the opportunity of different brush, uh, different uh, shapes of brush marks. Now I'm going to go in with some darker shadows underneath some of these rooftops. As, as per normal in watercolour, uh, pretty sort of traditional way of doing this. I start painting the light areas and then going with the dark areas, including the, uh, the shadows here. So I want quite a nice dark shadow of course shadows aren't gray they they are inherit inheriting the color of um objects around them or the object that they're on so that instantly gives a bit more depth and three-dimensional feel to that roof there's another little roof jutting out behind this one and a support to it. If 
then almost a little triangle to define the recess of the window at the top there. A few lines on that terracotta roof to just define the, the, the rows of tiles. Shadow underneath the bush. Just down on the right hand side of the leaning roof. A few little specks inside the bush. So I'm just painting in a few hoops there to follow the curve of the roof tiles. Just while that's drying a little bit, I'll get in the, the left hand side of the street, leaving a few white areas for the windows. And I'm thinking about perspective as well, just to get the windows a little bit thinner, a little bit narrower in the distance. Use the finger if I want to blend in things a little bit or just gently lift off some of the paint. Quite a blue shadow mix now for the rest of the shadow underneath that roof. Coming down to the top of the doorway. And the dark, the dark that I put initially, that's now gently with gravity. My board's on a slight uh, slope, maybe about 10 degrees or so. So it's just blending in a little bit with the lighter colour below. And that, that will dry a little bit lighter um, as we go on. The doorway is quite, it's like a sort of reddish brown. Well, it, it's, I guess it's sort of like a terracotta colour in a way. Um, and that's going to frame one of my figures on the left hand side. Just down on the right hand side of that figure and then down on the left hand side over the shoulders and then continue with the steps bit of a light red and the winds are red
just uh, checking how dry that road is. Over now to the right hand side of the road, starting at the top, chimney, a little bit of a trim, and then the edge of the roof. We're going quite dark here, neutral tint, Amazon crimson, fairly thick mixture here, not too much water. And I'll start off uh, quite dark at the top of the building and then go a bit lighter and then darker towards the base. So I start from the top and carefully follow my lines. Try and get them as vertical as possible. Can leave out a few little bits of the paper again, could be bits of the window catching some reflected light. And you can see that I've just twisted the brush a bit to get the edge of the brush. So I can alternate with a brush like this, I can alternate between a very fine point and then a flat edge for um, really covering a, a larger area and getting a good edge to it. Right, back to a point now. A little bit of shadow underneath the roof of the building at the end of the street. There's something creating some angular shadows on that building at the end there. And you can see I'm not having to constantly go to my water container, pick up more water. I'm just really, um, there's water in that brush and it's, I'm just alternating with picking up some color in my palette going along. Because I've, because Adele's photograph was portrait and orientation. My my paintings, landscape, I'm having to stretch out things just a little bit, like the building on the left, the building on the right, and just using my imagination to uh, extend the features, just make them a little bit wider. So that's the upper story and as good a line as I can manage on the top of the balcony is there. So I'll leave the, the front edge of the balcony is quite light. There's the gap between the two.
the the little sort of uh, lower building that's joining these two. Now I'm coming darker to the street level, so I'm making, I'm, I'm actually got more paint to water ratio. A lot, a lot of people ask me about what is the, what do I reckon is the water to paint ratio. So here it's mostly paint or pigment, not so much water. Well, the, the water is still in the, in the brush. It's just uh, seeping down there. You can see with that little bit of a slope on the board, the paint's just coming down with gravity. And I'll just let it blend in with each other. It will dry a little bit lighter, so you won't see the lights and the dark so much in that, in that shadow. Going to go a bit cooler on the shadow and a bit darker, a bit cooler and darker on the shadow going across the street. So mix up a bit of ultramarine blue. Get the uh, edge again on the brush. Start at the back and work my way forwards. Go across the street and then I'll go up the wall on the other side. Just twist the brush, right angles, across the street. And then this next bit of shadow coming out. This is probably a little bit more watery here because I want the shadow mix to be a little bit transparent and show a tiny bit of that white line going up the street just to show through the shadow. I'm almost uh, glazing in a way with that thin layer and take, take the shadow over to the right uh, up to the bottom of the wall and blend the two together. Back to the two figures on the left. I normally would start with the a bit of flesh colour and then for the face and then a couple of arms, legs if they're wearing shorts or something similar. Arms, arm one and two. And then think about the colour of the clothing. So a bit of a an orangey, what colour would I describe as? A bit orangey for the top. And then I'll go a bit darker towards the bottom. I think that one's possibly a male fig a female figure on the left and a male figure on the right. I think. Or, <laughs> or almost unisex. Now for this tricky shadow, 
going away from the figures because the light's behind us. Um, I always I always have difficulty with this. Um, let's get in the uh, shadows behind the figure first. So shadow starting from the bottom of the steps towards that figure, it's about right. Danger is if I, if I put too much shadowy mixture around their feet and legs, <coughs> it, it, looks, it always looks a little bit weird. Um, and it's difficult then to see where, they, where the uh, legs and feet are. But I think that, that'll... That'll work. Uh, just to find those steps a bit more. Something over on the left hand side of that building. The uh, right hand figure. And also being fairly loose with the shadows, you can try and get a, a feeling of movement in the figures as well, so they're not too static. few patches of dark in the background and I don't want to go too dark in the background if I if I go a little bit too dark in value the danger is that will bring that background too far forward so it won't appear so so much in the distance so just need to be a bit careful uh, a little bit of dark coloring now in in the recess for the windows just on the left hand side of the whiter area. And a doorway there maybe. Over on the right hand side, the that shadow, the, the shady wall is drying quite nicely and I can go in with a bit more of a darker, thicker colour. Now I go back to that middle house and get in some darker shadow underneath the ease of the roof and use this darker thicker mix now for a little bit of the architectural uh, decoration or trim of these buildings A 
middle window. And some doorways in the distance. Just come around that figure, then the middle, uh, middle lower building. Get some darker values in there. Upper story of this right hand house, the uh, windows in the top story or little little doorway to the balcony. A few, uh, a few of those timber joists for the roof. Now at the uh, base of this building, I'm going to keep, keep things fairly, <coughs> excuse me, fairly loose, uh, dry, dry, almost dry brush now, fairly thick paint. The doorways um, in the photograph, they are they're actually quite dark and I don't want to be um, too dark. I'm, I'm going to go for more of a sort of trim and outline to those, keeping it fairly light there. It's dark, it's dark enough um, down in that bottom right corner without it being totally, uh, totally dark. Neutral tint, anodin crimson, tiny bit of ultramarine blue. Two figures down the end of the street. So I had painted around those. I could have, I was sort of keeping my options open with those figures by by painting around those with the shadows. I could have kept them fairly light, fairly light like I'll do for the nearer figure on the right hand side, but I've, I've gone darker. Um, they're, they're sort of uh, in the distance there in the, in the shadows, so keep them dark. So nearby figure, face, arms, and then the clothing. Just lift off with the fingertips a little bit if it's too much paint there. I'm down to details now in this stage of the painting and this is where 
uh, having a mop brush with a good point to it, I can still keep using that same brush for these smaller details. So I've got to get in just a few more little finer lines in different places. I've got to do the, the aerial uh, Sputnik decorations going across the street. I've got the balconies to do. But this doorway, I'm going to just give a hint of some of the panes of the doorway. Not doing every single pane, but just a few of these uh, areas blocked out with a darker colour. And then carefully round that figure again. I think I've done this about three times now, going around that figure. Uh, that's, this will be the last time. Down to the shoulder. few more horizontals there on that doorway. Back to the roof. A few hoops so that I'm giving the impression of the curve of the tiles and a little bit of maybe in like another another row of tiles um, one on top of the other. Right, these uh, Sputniks in the sky, I'm going to keep them fairly loose. I don't know exactly what they are, but just a, there's a sort of central bit to it. And then these arms coming off, like, a, like are they stars or asteroids or something? Or um, maybe they've got some, maybe there's a, a festival going on there. It's got some kind of significance to that. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, keep it fairly loose with these little spikes coming out. Going a little bit smaller, a bit looser in the distance. I need to uh, then connect these from one side of the street to the other. It's good sort of um, design element or composition element with when you've got two sides of the street like this to have something joining the upper part of the picture, one side of the street to the other. So. If you've seen any of my other street street scene videos, you'll see me use bunting, which um, you see a lot of, uh, particularly in UK towns. Uh, well, during during the summer season, particularly, could be Christmas decoration decorations um, left up. Some of the uh, French street scenes I've done. Um, Lots of the French towns, they keep up their Christmas decorations, not take them down because there's a few festivals through the year, so just keep them up. Or it could be, 
Could be a banner, could be a political banner or some sales promotion going on. Just anything to... I've done a few uh, Turkish and Egyptian street scenes where there's been a banner going going from one side of the street to another, like a sort of um, old cloth banner or um, political slogan or something. So uh, here we are um, doing these lines going across and with this brush, with a good mop brush, you can get in a quite a fine line, almost the thickness of a hair. That, that, uh, that decoration just needs another little spike to it. few more arms there, a couple of uh, lines to define the arms of figure, darker, lower half a little bit darker, blend it in with the fingers. A bit darker underneath that rooftop. Underneath the balconies, that needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm just adding in a weak clear there of a darker value. And then I'll do that with the second balcony as well. So making sure now I've got a fine point again for the balcony. Start on the left hand side, a bit more water. That's the uh, top of the railings and they're not not, I'm not painting in every single reading, just just a few, leave out a few, paint a few, so that you've got just the impression of these railings. They're quite uh, fancy in the photograph. I've, um, I've kept mine fairly plain and ordinary, but they're quite... Um, Got a bit of a curve to them in the in the source photo. Now, having painted those underneath the balcony, I still think the the front of the balcony, the front leading edge of the balcony, is just a little bit too light. So I'm going to be just glazing over that a little bit now again, just to make it a bit darker. Doesn't matter if the balcony, the railing paint, just bleeds a little bit in there, doesn't matter. At this stage, I'm just 
checking everything, making sure I haven't missed out anything. Add a little bit of shadow behind some of these lighter areas. Could be a, a sort of cobblestone, maybe that's a little bit higher than the rest. Just add a little bit of shadow behind it. A few little dots in the street. So when I finish the painting, I'll then run into a, a little bit of a self-critique system just to uh, do a bit of a debrief. So here's the finished painting then. As I normally do in these videos, a little bit of a uh, summary of uh, my overall process and what I thought worked okay and what maybe didn't work okay. So first of all, the source photo was portrait and orientation, which is okay. I could have, I could have gone portrait. I could have just concentrated on that element there, for example, uh, just looking up the street, but I decided to stretch it out a bit. So I had to compensate by making wider the left-hand building and the right-hand building from the source photograph. To, just to make the composition look all right and stretch stretch it out a bit in that um, with those dimensions. But it was a, a one brush challenge using a mop brush, covering uh, what, a, what a mop brush is and why would we use a mop brush, but also the, the elements of a mop brush that can be really useful so that the, the ability to hold a lot of paint when I was doing the sky and the shadows, the edge of the brush as well, when I'm getting in the nice edges of the shadows. And thirdly, the point, for example, some of the finer lines, like the, the support lines going across the street or the, the railings. So a very versatile brush to make lots of different marks but the main thing, I suppose, is the is the ability to hold a lot of paint so that you, you can keep the flow going when you're painting. You're not constantly stopping and starting and mixing, mixing more paint. I could have done this with my normal three brushes, so a, a bigger mop brush for the initial washes and then a, a, a smaller or rather a medium-sized mop brush for the shadows and then a finer um, synthetic round brush for the details one that's got a good point to it I could have done this with three brushes but it was a nice challenge to to use that one brush and, and just testing out the personality of that brush and getting used to it whenever you buy a new brush it's going to take some time um, to, to get used to it it's going to take a few paintings to get into the swing of things with a new brush but I was pleased with the brush, nice soft uh, mop brushes are generally quite soft as well. So you can be quite gentle with the application of paint. And when you've got different layers with watercolor, um, uh, like in this area down here, fairly soft. So I can still see with that very thin layer of paint, I can still see um, just about those lighter areas with these sort of transparent layers I was laying. If I, if I had a hard 
if, if my brush was too hard, I might have damaged the surface of the paint below and possibly even if I overdid it, possibly even the surface of the paper. And then you, you get to that the, the actual watercolour then doesn't look as fresh as it could do and uh, might appear might appear sort of a little, little bit muddy in appearance um, by, by overworking that way. But composition-wise, quite pleased with that. One of the things that I, I quite liked about the scene were these Sputnik-type things. I still don't know what they're celebrating. Maybe somebody could pop in the comments what they're supposed to be. Um, these decorations in in the uh, going across the street. But that, I thought it was quite attractive to have that as a compositional thing um, with those sort of going in that, that kind of fashion down down the uh, the street, um, decreasing in size, going into the into the distance. Um, it was a bit of a challenge with the sun being behind and to the right. So I had to, for example, in here with these shadows, I had to be quite careful going around these the legs of the figure um, and the way that I made the shadow shapes there, but keeping, I think keeping things loose does help when you, if you're, if you're like in a, into a, a tight form of painting style, that can be quite difficult to manage. Might have overdone it with the specks paper left unpainted, possibly in the sky, maybe too many white bits. With these white bits, what you can do, um, particularly useful for a seaside scene, is make some seagulls or seabirds out of them. So, you know, this little bit of white could be um, part of a bird. Um, you know, you can you can do things with those those uh, lighter areas there just to uh, compensate for that. But a lot of values as well with watercolor, darks, lights. I with the walls. You saw me first of all tone things down a bit so that it wasn't so bright. Um, so this wall here, I just picked up any sort of old paint off the palette from a, from the previous painting just to dull it down. Well, I put a bit of yellow in there and whatever was left on the palette and likewise there. And then I, um, in a sort of similar value, a similar sort of tonal value, I laid down an initial layer of paint on the road just to give me these white stripes going up the road. The, um, actually in the source photo there, very delicately laid, almost like a mosaic of um, lighter pebbles. Uh, there's like a chevron herringbone type or chevron pattern going up the street. I just kept mine simple just with um, three or four lines there going up. And then I also used a variety of other watercolour techniques, for example, the dry brush mark stroke. We we did a little bit of wet in wet as well in that area there. Um, where else did I use wet in wet? Oh, a little bit here, a little bit of wet in wet going on there. But a lot of dry brush marks with thicker, um, with thicker, drier paint to get in those finer marks and darker marks. Hope you like it. Um, remember the Patreon site if you want to have a go at challenges like this. Um, go up to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. Join the club and take part in a lot of the uh, projects we've got on a regular on a regular basis. Thanks for watching. Catch up with you on the next video.